everybody. I'm here joined with Gina. Gina is a core member of the Semantic Kernel team, and she's been tasked with bringing OpenAI function calling into the Semantic Kernel. It's been a much asked for feature uh, ever since OpenAI announced it, and it's really meant to allow for really just stability and ultimately more reliable output coming from these large language models, especially if you're wanting to uh, get structured output like JSON or, or things like that out. But I'll let Gina talk more about why it's important and how ultimately uh, she and the Semantic Kernel team decided to uh, bring in an initial implementation for this. So Gina, yeah. go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, so OpenAI's function calling, I'm sure many who are watching these videos are already familiar with the feature, but if you're not, um, what it allows you to do is in your request to OpenAI, you can provide information about a set of functions that you have available and let the model choose if it wants to just reply with it a normal chat message or if it wants to choose to call a function, it could tell you what function to call and the parameters that you need to call. Um, then you as the, the developer of the application can execute that function um, and uh, use that in your chat application. And so this was a really interesting feature and, and honestly, it's a challenging one to figure out how it fits into the world of semantic kernel. Um, when I first took a look at it and talking with some of my colleagues, we saw similarities between this function calling and what we have as uh, the concept of planning, where you utilize the model to tell you what other external functions need to be called or what you know, plugins that you might have available that could be utilized to answer the question in conjunction with the AI model. Um, and so we evaluated several different uh, options for how to bring in this feature. One of them was to implement a specific planner around it. But what, as we talked through that, we thought, well, this is something we might want to integrate into all of our planners at some point and make them more reliable with structured output. So that's kind of a little bit where we're thinking of moving uh, in the near future. Um, but for now, we wanted to get something out that people can use. And since this feature is currently specific to OpenAI, um, we chose an implementation that keeps this feature in our OpenAI connector. So that if you're using chat completions with OpenAI through our iChat completions interface, um, you can also utilize functions. So I think this will make a lot more sense when I show some code. So I'm going to share my screen here and walk you through some example code that we have for using function calling. So here's an example that's currently in our code base. And so feel free to go grab this code and try it out for yourself. So Can we zoom, what we, zoom in one level. Oh, sure. Is that better? Yes. yes All sure. right. So in this example, the first thing we're going to do is initialize the kernel. Let's scroll down to where we do that. So I'm setting up my kernel to use OpenAI chat completion, although this also works with Azure OpenAI as well. Um, and I'm going to import some functions and plugins. So in the semantic kernel, we have one of our core plugins, that's the time plugin, and that has some functions about like what day is today or you know what time is it? And then we, I'm also importing the plugin for Klarna, so that'll allow me to interact with uh, the Klarna service to find information about products that are available. So once I set up my kernel, I'm going to create a new chat, and then I'm going to create my request settings object. And this is where I have the option to specify what functions I have available and indicate to the model if I want it to utilize function. So we've added um, this, uh, this method here where I can get the function of everything we have available and this here, to open AI function. So we've added this model to represent um, the functions that we can make available to open AI. So this uh, gives us information about them. We create this function definition that OpenAI is expecting, and that includes like a description of the function and all of the parameters needed. So we use this 
class to define that. And so we've added this translation layer where you can easily take anything you have registered with the kernel and convert it into that function description that OpenAI is expecting. So I've set my list of functions here. And then there's one other uh, parameter we've added onto our request settings called function call. And this, we have a few options for this. So if we want to allow the model to choose whether or not it wants to indicate a function call and to choose which function that is, there's an option for auto, um, which is the one I'm using here. If I want to get tell it to use a specific function, I can give it the name of that here. So for example, this is for the time plugin and the date function. Um, or if I say, you know what, I don't want to use a function at all, just give me my normal chat completions, we can indicate function call none. And then once I have that set, I'm going to do my completions. And let's take a look at the code there, but then we'll give it a run and see what happens. So what we're going to do is we'll call get chat completions with that our chat history and that request settings that I just set, and we'll get a response back. And so in your app, you're going to have to take a look, well, do we have a chat message response? If you're getting a function response from the model, this is going to be empty. Um, instead, if you get a function, that's where you'll have to check chat result .get function response. And again, we've added this translation layer to get a function response object that contains all of the information that's easily um, available for you. So I can go through this function response. You know, I'm in this example, I'm printing out the information about it, the name of the function and all the arguments that the model has said to use. And then um, we've also added some helper functions to look up the function in the kernel. So if you are able to use um, this function calling feature with any functions you have available. The kernel doesn't have to know about it as long as you can provide that function description to the model, but we want to make it super easy for you to utilize functions that are already registered with the kernel because we have all that information. So here we're going to try to look up um, the function response we got back and see is this an SK function that we know about? If so, we can run that with the kernel um, and then we can see our results. So let's take a look at this in action. Just going to run the example here. So first, I'm going to query with what day is today? And the model has said we're going to use, zoom in a little here. We're going to use the date function from the time plugin. Today is Friday, September 29th. And then I want to know well, what computer tablets are available for under $200. And for this one, I'm letting the model decide what function to use. And it decides to use products using get from the Klarna plugin with these parameters. Country code US, I'm asking for computer tablets, max price of $200. And so this is the JSON response that I got. And what I ended up doing in this example is I, I added this response into our chat history and then asked one more question. Now that that's in the chat history, I can ask which of those is the cheapest. And it's telling me there is a tablet in this list for $38.99. So I've got that information right there. Now, some people who are familiar with function calling and the rag pattern might say, hey, there's there's a piece missing here. And so as Alex said, this is our initial implementation for function calling, and we already have plans to add on more to it. One of those pieces to add on is the ability to add a function message into our chat history. So we add messages to the chat history. There's a role attached to them. You might have the user role, the assistant role, the system role, and we want to add the ability to add a function role. So the flow would be you send your user message to the model, the model responds back, call this function. Um, that's when we want to call the function, then add a function message with the response, and then we can send another completion request to the model and get back a response that utilizes that function response into a chat, the chat message. 
So it'd be a little more fluid instead of getting that whole JSON output, we just get a chat response that would say, hey, here's a list of tablets for under $200. Um, what has held us up from doing that right now is that our goal with Semantic Kernel is to create this platform that is model agnostic. We want it to be able to use it with all different AI models. And so we've created abstractions for chat message and for completions interfaces and, and a number of other things. And it adding this function message does require making some changes to those abstractions. So we're still trying to figure out what that structure would look like so that we can support this feature, but also still make everything work nicely for anyone and any AI model that they want to use. Um, so hopefully we'll have that follow up for you soon. But for now, we would really love to see how people use this feature as that will help inform the direction that we go with it. Um, so please reach out to us, show us what you're building with it, you know, fork the code, add it in, come to our office hours and, and show us what you've made because I would really love to see um, function calling make your applications more powerful using SK. This is super awesome. Well, thank you, Gina, and thank you for you and the team for all this hard work to really approach this uh, feature in a very thoughtful way. Um, certainly, I'm sure there's a lot of engineering risks or trade-offs that you had to kind of think about, and uh, I'm glad that you've uh, decided to take this this path to, to do something. So thank you, and yeah, I mean, look, look forward to seeing what uh, comes out for the future of function calling. Yeah, me too. All Thanks, right. Alex. Thank you.